Hello and welcome back to the Ultimate Guide to Touch OSC. I'm Tim Corpus, composer and sound designer, and today we're going to kind of do a sequel to last week's video about Reaper templates for plugins. So we're going to look at an interesting way to solve moving around in Reaper and accessing those FX. <laughs> So this was a great question. It was about using Reaper and when you want to use a specific plugin, which was a tab on the uh, iPad here, uh, what happens when you click that tab is you move over to the compressor, but then you're not necessarily having the compressor up uh, on Reaper. So let's look at how we can pull up the effects that we're working on per the tab. So let's go into the editor and we're going to work on the template that we used from last week. So you may recognize this from last week. This is that template and we have EQ, compressor and reverb. And so what I wanna do is actually add another tab. So we're gonna go down here to the bottom right and add another tab. Because a lot of the time when I'm using Touch OSC, I need to have shortcuts available. So we're gonna add a shortcut and then we're gonna show how we can access these effects. So let's go ahead and call this shortcuts. We'll put that in label shortcuts. And here we are. And let's go ahead and make this bright pink. So we have shortcuts here. And in order to edit this panel, we double click it and we are in. And what I wanna add is a button and this button it's just gonna be something simple, a simple action that we're going to send. So let's go ahead and give it a label. So we have this label and what we're gonna do is a four point envelope. So let's just call this, I don't know, envelope. So we'll go down to text and then this is gonna be our envelope. And specifically what we're gonna add is a four point envelope. And here in Reaper, let's pull up our action list. So action, show action list. And what we're gonna add is something for our envelope. So envelope is what we're gonna search. And what I wanna add is this right here, insert four envelope points at a time selection. So now let's give our button a MIDI message. So we select our button, we come down here and we're gonna remove the OSC message that we don't need. And then here, because we're using the same template from last time, I know that we were living on program channel two, so we're gonna do that again. And just because I know it's clean, we're gonna go with 40. Um, and again, that's just because I know it's available. All right, so this is all living within our shortcuts. And like I said, I like my Touch OSC template to have you know different plugins on different tabs, but the main tab, the main page I'm working with is different uh, shortcuts, different buttons that I need to press, maybe uh, access to the grid to change it from eighth notes to 16th notes. Things like that are what I'm using regularly and the most. So we have our MIDI signal set in our button. Let's go into Reaper. All right, and so let's select, insert four point envelope, add, and then we're gonna go ahead and touch the button and it has now been added. Channel two, CC40, great. So let's just show this real quick. Uh, let's press V on the keyboard, and there we go. We have our volume. So let's just select between measure three and five, and now let's hit that envelope button. Actually, I think we have to select the volume envelope, and then we hit our button, and you can see it's added four nodes to our envelope. And now we can easily adjust this if we wanted. Terrific. So this is a really simple action, a simple button on a template, something I actually use quite regularly to do. Um, but now we're gonna go back into our EQ and we're gonna edit that. But we don't wanna have to open it by clicking in Reaper. So let's pull it up just by using the tabs. Great, so we have our shortcut tab set up. Now we're gonna put a button in to call the pages and also open up our effects. So let's add a button right here and let's make this green just like eq and we're going to lower the alpha and you'll see why in a little bit but great so this button when we push this 
it will send a MIDI signal to call an action in Reaper. So what we need to do is remove the OSC message. And this is going to be two and then constant 41. Great. And also what we're going to do is make this into a toggle. So when we push this, it's going to open it. And when we push it again, it's going to close it. So let's go ahead and turn this to toggle press. And this action is going to happen on rise. Great. So we've got our button here, which we can kind of see. Let's go back into Reaper. Here's our action list. So what we're looking for is SWS float and float FX1. That's the one that we want. So let's select this and we are going to add a MIDI message and push that button and you can see it set it. Great. And now it is turned on. But what we want to do now is push that button again and close FX1. So let's look for close FX. And you can see this open or close FX number one on last touch track. That's exactly what we want. So let's go back into the editor. And now here on our button, let's disable this message and let's add another MIDI message. And this is going to be for two constant 42. And now this is going to be on fall. Perfect. So let's go ahead and set this up. So let's select this action, add, and now we push that button one more time. And now it sets that to 42. Great. So let's try that again. So if we're selecting our track, if we push that toggle button, it should open. And then if we push it again, it closes it, which is exactly what we want to do. So now we're going to move that over our tab. So let's take this, move it over. And before we spread it out, what we want to do is add a local message so that we're calling the correct tab. So down here, go ahead and add local message. And let's go ahead and click the dropper button. And now when we push this button, it will call this tab. And you'll see why this is important in a minute. So let's stretch this out to make sure this covers it. So let's try it out. We select our track with the effects on it. And from shortcuts, we push that EQ button and it switches to the EQ on the iPad and it shows our EQ here in Reaper. We push that again, it closes and goes back to shortcuts. Awesome. So now we're going to replicate that button for the other tabs. So let's go ahead and add another button. And again, we're going to move it down here just so we can see it. We'll make this a little bit of a dark orange and lower the alpha. And you saw that the reason we wanted to lower the alpha is so that it doesn't totally cover up the text here. It just highlights it a little bit. And I want edges. And then what we're going to show is let's remove the OSC message. And we want constant two for our MIDI message. And this is going to be 43. And again, this is going to be rise just like before. So let's go ahead back to Reaper and plug that all in. So let's look for float again. And we want float to add, push that button and it's set. And then let's do the reverse to close that. We'll select the button. Let's turn it off. Let's add another MIDI message to, you guessed it, 44. This is going to be fall. And then don't forget that this button does need to be toggle press. All right, let's go ahead and set that in Reaper. So now we want close FX, which is down here. And then let's add, push that button and it's set. And then once again, let's add the local message. So select our button and then we will add a local message. And then as we do the eyedropper tool to this, it's pager two, 
one is actually this, zero, one. So this is gonna be two, so let's move that to two and that'll make that work. And then we can move this up here and we can stretch it out. Let's go ahead and try it out. So we're currently on this shortcuts page. We select our track, we hit recomp and it opens this up and it is changed on the iPad. We push that button again and it closes and sends us back to shortcuts. So now we're gonna replicate that whole button process again with the two MIDI messages and the local message for the reverb button. This time we'll do it in fast forward. Okay, so now we've got all three of our buttons set. Let's go back into Reaper and try them all out. So we're in Reaper, we have this other empty track selected, but let's select our main track, which has all three of our effects in it. And from the shortcuts tab, let's go ahead and open our EQ. Terrific, we have our EQ, let's close that. And now we're back to shortcuts. Open our recomp, close that, open our reverb, and again, we can still move things, awesome. And then let's close that. But let's say we are at EQ, and now we wanna to go to Reverb. It'll keep them both open, which is very helpful if you're working on both of them. And then you can click the uh, tabs to close them, and it'll return you again to your shortcuts. And again, let's just show one more instance of this. Let's work with our second track, hit V. We want to... Uh, have this whole section, let's go to our shortcuts, select our volume, we hit our button, and now we can play with our you know, nodes here. Let's X out of this, and let's go ahead and select our first track that has all of our uh, different effects on it, and we wanna open the reverb. There we go, we play with that a little bit, and now let's go to our recomp, and then we'll play with that a little bit. Let's move that threshold down, close recomp out, and then let's get back to work again. Select the volume, add it again. And then that reverb's still open. Let's close that by hitting that tab again. And then let's say here, let's add our EQ, add. Great, and we have that in the first slot. Just beware that if you were to add, let's say the comp, and they were in a different order, it's going to do something different, right? So let's close this out, select this track, and let's hit the recomp button. And you notice it opened the EQ because it is tied to the second slot, right? So you gotta make sure you set your effects in order. Like the EQ, open the compressor, hit that again, close it. So thanks for the question, it was a good one. Uh, it's great to do kind of a sequel and answer a question which uh, I hadn't even really thought of doing something like this for the last video. Uh, so this is a great time saver to move around your effects in Reaper. So hopefully you learned something and you can like this video and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to also check out the Discord server and the Facebook group. We'll see you around and thanks for watching.